Hello, my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Guess what I get to work on? <laughs> what is it? Well, your guess is as good as mine. I do not know what brand this is. Maybe we'll find out because I think we're going to have to take this apart and maybe there'll be a clue inside that I can't see. But uh, I kind of doubt it. I don't think there's any real label or anything on this anywhere. Um, I don't see any markings in the headstock or on the inside anywhere. My guess is it's a you know, a mail order type guitar, probably from Sears or, you know, Montgomery Ward or something like that. Uh, it could be a Harmony. I, you know, it could just about be anything. No telling. But it's in really, really bad shape. As you can see, it's coming apart. Uh, it's coming apart down here. I can hear things rattling around inside, so there could be loose braces that have fallen loose. I don't really know. The strings, uh, you, you could throw a horse through there, <laughs> let alone a dog. <laughs> That's really high, really bad. So I don't know how far we're going to get with this. The owner just wants it to uh, stop decaying, basically. It's just a wall hanger. and uh, But, uh, you know, for me, stopping decaying is basically synonymous with uh, making it, you know, playable. So that's really my goal is to try to make it, uh, you know, where you could play it if you wanted to, but it'll end up being a wall hanger. So here we go. Well, the first thing we do on this is uh, get rid of all the stuff we don't need. We've got a piece of leather tied up in pretty unique way here. I'm sure that's for hanging it on the wall. So I'll have to get that off there. I'm going to get these strings off here. Um, they're of no benefit. You can see the bridge has been propped up with extra pieces of uh, wood. We'll save everything and try to put everything back just like it is. I'm going to cut these strings off first thing because there's no point saving any of that. They're, these <laughs> My guess is these strings are probably 50 years old. That's my guess. Could be older than that. Pretty, pretty bad. They're just black. There is so much mold and mildew on this. I think it's making me sneeze. Its parts are just falling off of it. I'll get a little further along and I'll show you the next step. Like most of these old guitars from the era, the strings that were on this are like bailing wire. They're way, way, way heavier than this guitar should have ever had, which is a real, you know, contributing factor to the condition that it's in. Uh, the neck is bowed on it, everything. It's just, the strings were just thick, really hard, stiff strings. They didn't have as many choices back then a lot of times for, you know, light strings or, you know, different gauges. Pretty much you went down to the drugstore and bought your strings and that's kind of the way it was. But we're going to get rid of all this because this is, nothing good's going to come out of these strings, that's for sure. We've got them off there. I think the next thing I'm going to do is get a pan of uh, warm water, maybe a little soap, and we're going to wash this thing down because it's got so much mold and mildew on it that, you know, you can see the mold and stuff on it here. It's pretty bad. So let's clean it up. Well, I've just got some hot soapy water. I'm kind of curious about this down here first thing to see what these letters look like when you clean that up. Yeah, just hot soapy water. Uh, that's, that's where I'm starting anyway. Makes it look better. You can see some, you know, grain pattern in it. And look at the dirt off of there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's pretty filthy. You know, I don't like to soak them, soak them down, but you got to do what you got to do also. I think in this case, I'm going to take that pick guard off here and uh, maybe this tail piece off too. I probably should have just took them off before I even started. That's okay. 
does, there's no black and white rule about any of this. I just, the only black and white rule is I gotta get rid of all this mold and mildew. Keep wringing the towel out real good in the hot water. That water's really hot. And so that'll help to get rid of all this mess. That's a good step one right there. Now we'll move up here and get on the neck. And again, just trying to get rid of the mold and mildew mostly first thing. And we're gonna need to take these tuning keys out and all that too. Uh, I'll still go ahead and wash it first and then we'll take the tuning keys out. Like my father before me, I labor and toil. But my father said, Son, you should move away. I'm just drying it off as best I can for now and then we'll. We'll go much further. It's just one step at a time. I think I'll go ahead and take the rest of it apart now and then I'll show you what that looks like after I get all these pieces off of here. Gary, the fellow I'm restoring this for, said he thinks that it was just a mail order guitar and that it probably came from the 20s. And I kind of agree with that. I would say that's probably pretty close to the vintage. Uh, partly because all the screws are straight head screws, there's no Phillips screws on it, and back then that was kind of the norm, was, you know, using just straight slotted screws. It wasn't too common to see a Phillips screw back then, so that's part of the reason I would say that it's that old. But then again, I don't know. It might not be that old, but I would say it is pretty, pretty old, just based on how everything looks. He said he saved it from the dumpster. It was basically being thrown away, and he saved it from that, so he didn't want to see it be thrown away since it belonged to a relative, you know. I think it was his uncle or somebody like that that owned it. We ought to be able to buff that out, clean that up make that look halfway decent, believe it or not. You can see the initials there a little bit better now. Hopefully you can see them. In case you can't, it's CEB. <clears throat> all right, that gets all the metal stuff off the body. Let's go ahead and take the tuning keys out of it too. I'll get those off and show you what it looks like in a minute. For just a bit of randomness, I just Googled uh, when did Phillips screws become popular? And they came popular in 1936, it said. And General Motors was one of the first big customers. And anyway, the point is, uh, that kind of fits with this, since these are all straight screws, and I'm pretty sure this guitar is all original. I don't think anything's been changed. Therefore, uh, these fill these straight screws like this, um, you know, kind of indicates that this was probably before 1936 for sure. And he, he felt like it came from the 20s, so that probably fits. You can tell these screws haven't moved since they were put in. <laughs> but they're coming out okay. Haven't had too much trouble. Okay, so let's see, will they come out? Yes, they do, and that even indicates even more that these have never been off there. You can see the imprint and uh, there's no other scarring or anything. So I feel pretty positive these have never been off the guitar until now. And of course we're gonna clean these all up, make them look real nice, or at least try to. So now let's uh, clean off the rest of the peg head. Yeah, the varnish is kind of bubbled up and 
wrinkled up, so I'm really washing off some of the old wrinkled up varnish too when I'm doing this. And I guess that's okay too, because there's really not much you can salvage with that. And we're not talking about a huge value here, you understand. This is, it's, it's more of a sentimental thing. It's not much value attached to this, but uh, we'll still attend to it as best we can and make it just as nice as we can <clears throat> without going crazy and spending a ton of money. At least that's kind of got it stabilized in terms of the mold and mildew for the moment. So I think what I'm going to do now is see if I can get this thing apart because it's so bad that there's not much point in just start to glue it back together. It really needs to come apart and go back together uh, in a decent form. All right, well, I'm just seeing if I can work this around and, and get it to break loose. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be too hard to get it to break loose, but you never know. I'm just trying to take my time and just working it down that seam. I'm pretty sure it's just gonna pop loose. Said farm life is dying. Son, please don't stay. I moved to the city and tried to fit in. I'm not sure what's all coming loose on this thing. I know the 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 bind or the uh, kerf on the inside is stuck to the top around in places here, so some of that's going to come out. But I really don't know how else to take it apart other than just do what I'm doing. And we'll just see what, what has to be fixed after we get it broke open. I'm 100% I'm confident I can fix whatever breaks. But, you know, if this was a super valuable guitar, I'd be taking a little more time with it. But the owner doesn't want to spend a lot of money. He just wants to get it back in reasonable condition. Well, I cleaned my knife off and got the glue from the last time I used it off so that it's a little slicker. That helps. It helps and then it's scary too because it can slide through and cut you. So you got to be careful. But you know, so many of these things you need to hold a certain way. So many people tell me I need to clamp these things down, put them in a vise or something. And the problem with that is that you move positions every few seconds, just every few seconds. And if you were clamping these things down, you'd just spend all your time clamping and unclamping. So, you know, if that works for you, fine. But for me, I work too fast for that kind of method. Like, just like this, you have to turn them around every so often and get a different bite on it and try a different option. There you go, that, that helped it a lot. Now we've just got one little spot here that's still held, I think. I think we're getting there. There we go, that might have done it, yep. There you go, what do you think about that? No brace, no brace, no brace, loose brace. And, oh, well, they're still sitting here, though. That's good. They're sitting in place. Hey, that's, that's awesome. Can't beat that. All the parts look like they're there, including all the dead brown recluse spiders that I see in there. Here's one for sure. Uh, he's so brittle, I can't get him out. He's going to break before I get him out of there. Where is it? Dead brown recluse. I'm sure that's what that was. What was flopping around was a piece of uh, stuff broken off, probably from up here, and we'll put that back as best we can. Oh, looks like maybe we'll have all that because there's some more here, so maybe that came out of right here, probably. Yep, it did. So we'll be able to put that back. So let me get this all cleaned up first thing, and then we'll move on from there. Well, it's uh, in bad shape. But I think we can, you know, get it back up in decent shape. I don't know if it'll be playable or not. That's the truth of it. But I, I think if we can get all these braces put back in place and uh, glued down well, I'd say there's a 50-50 chance that it'll be playable. 
but it's about a 50-50. I don't think it's much better odds than that. Um, yeah, some of these are going to be hard to get back in place. I don't know if it'd be better just to go ahead and take the brace out entirely and then put it back or just leave it where it's at and glue it back. Because this is just going to be a wall hanger. It's not, it's not anything to be played seriously or anything. So I'm just going to try to chip out the old glue best I can. Just put it back together just like it is the best I can. Yeah, there we go. Now we got it out of there. That's probably the best way to go is to just get them out of there. I think that's the best way to go. Yep. And so that'll let me clean it up good and put it all back together better. This front one, yeah, it's loose in a place or two. It would be better if it would just come out. You know, it's, it's gonna come loose too. There we go. All right, so we got them all out of there. Now I can get in here and clean it out a lot better and glue it up a lot better. Well, you, these are the kinds of repairs you just take a little bit at a time. You, they'll overwhelm you if you try to address everything at once. You just gotta focus on one little thing at a time. And, and so I'm just gonna focus on fixing this little piece of a brace right here. Here's a, uh, looks like a yardstick or something. This is January 1937 on the stick. I don't know what that is. It's been glued in there. It looks like maybe it was glued in there to uh, stop a crack or something. This crack here, I bet, to the, I bet you it was originally glued there or something. Eh, maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, it says... Uh, R-I-G-H-T-E-R, January 1937, writer. Surely that's not the badge for the guitar. I'll put it in the uh, random pot of bits, but I'll look that up and see. Writer, R-I-G-H-T-E-R, January 1937. Well, like I said, in an effort to keep the cost down and just to get it done, uh, again, because it's not really important that it be a player, we're just going to, you know, do this as quick as we possibly can. I don't know if I should even try to put glue on the actual guitar top. Probably wouldn't hurt. Won't, won't worry about it too much, though. I'm just going to get it on there, put this brace back in place, and try to get it clamped and glued as well as I can. Kinda hard to do though, I will say that. Hard to clamp this stuff when you, you know, you gotta reach in so far on a lot of things. I'll get some more clamps. You can see I've got a lot of clamps on this already. And I've already got four and I'm fixing to put number five on here. You can't put too many clamps. I'm putting leather on the front side. You just can't get too many clamps on something like this. That's impossible. Especially with all the curves and twists and, you know, misshapen items that you're dealing with here because of all the time that's gone by and this thing is just kind of set and done its own thing for years. So basically, we're trying to bring it back into conformity, you know, back to the shape that it was when it was built. Will we get there? Probably not, but we'll get close. We'll, we'll be in the ballpark. That really made a difference right there, that last clamp. Hopefully you can see that the glue is squeezing out in a full length of that brace now. And trust me, that wasn't even close when I started. Wasn't even close. So, That'll make a big difference right there. 
that's you just work your way this way and try to do, we'll do this next one here probably won't do it till I'll give this a couple hours to set up and then I'll do this one and if you're wondering why I'm not using the go bar system where you push down on this that won't work on this something like this for two reasons number one it doesn't have enough force number two this is so misshapen it's not flat if it's flat or, or pretty close to flat the go bar thing works pretty good this is nowhere near flat it's kind of an arch top guitar and it's got a lot of curves and undulations uh, so anyway it's going to need uh, individual attention on every brace while those braces are doing their thing there's a this kerf is loose right through here so might as well try to squeeze a little glue down in there I'll try to paint it down in there with this brush. That helps a little bit too. You'd be surprised. You can poke it down in a crack like that with a brush better than you can just about anything else. Suction cups and syringes, I've tried them all. Don't like any of them. I gotta just tell you, I don't like messing with those things. They just don't do the job for me. I know other people have great luck with them, but not me. That works for me like that. All right, I'll look for other loose things that I can fix while all this is setting up. This area right here is pretty bad. Looks like somebody put in a piece of wood in there years ago. That, that solid piece of wood was added later. It never got in there all the way. They didn't do a bad job, they just didn't do a real good job, that's all. It's not, not terrible. Seen much worse. They, were, they just had it a little too tight to fit the spot. That's really what it boils down to. Little piece glued back in here. And then I'll clean this area up and we'll put their, their fix back in place. It's a lot harder to do this through the sound hole and I'm sure that's how they did it. I'll clean this piece up get all the glue off of it. It never did get glued real solid, that's the problem. They probably had no way to clamp it. And it's just a hair too long, so I'll go over to the sander and shorten it up just a little bit. It fits in there real well now, so we'll get the glue on it and we'll put it back in place. we got more. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do any more on this right now, like this stuff around here. I think I'm going to wait on that because there, some of that's glued to the top. So I think I'll set this aside and see what I can work on on the top. I say top, I mean back. Sorry. So yeah, I'll work on the back next and see what I can do with that. To fix this, I'm just going to Scrape off the old glue. Again, I'm not trying to be extra careful. I'm just trying to get this done as quick as possible and get it back into decent shape. I'll do a little bit of scraping on this too, just to clean off the old glue mostly. And again, I can't use the go bar on this again because it's just too curved and uh, I want to make everything conform to the shape that it is. This is the way the brace goes, I'm pretty sure. Okay, now we'll see about clamping that up. We'll start with some of these clamps and we'll go right dead center and work our way out on both sides. Got the leather under there. It's really hard to keep the leather and all that together while you're doing this. Yeah, it, it always wants to move or go somewhere you don't want it to. That's just kind of the nature of clamping. Ah, doggone it. There we go, that's better. Well, it was better except that the brace moved on me now. It's crazy how this stuff does this. Guess I better just go ahead and clamp it up on the end. 
get the end clamped and then work my way across because it's just moving on me. Yeah, simple, very simple, nothing to it. Really not sure the best clamp for this because it's, it's an angled thing. This has got pads on it, so I'm not worried about marring up the finish too much. Well, that sort of worked, except it didn't. Moved it forwards. Oh my goodness. This clamp does have leather on it already. Let's see if I can get it to hold something still. The glue will hold this, and I'm 100% confident. The tricky part of all of these kinds of restorations is the clamping. If you can get the clamps to hold, you know, and do a good job, then the glue will do its job. No problem at all. It's, it's actually simple if you can get the clamps, you know, and on there really well. I thought of my father, how the crops would get in. I could hear him say, son. Looking pretty good. Got to get one more clamp for right there. Well, there you go. That's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight clamps on that one brace. Probably going to let that just set by itself for a while and do its thing before I move on to the next brace. It's the next day, my friends, and I did some research on this little badge, and it is Richter, R-I-C-H-T-E-R, -E January 1937. It's it's actually Richter. I thought all along it was Ryder. Well, after I typed in Richter, January 1937, uh, guitar, I found that it is a Harmony. It's a Harmony Richter Archtop guitar from January 1937. So now that we know that, I'm going to try to clean up this badge a little bit. And uh, I'm going to clean up this area, and I'm going to glue it back prominently here. In fact, I think I'm going to glue it back... Uh, where you can read it through the sound hole better. In other words, I'm gonna, I think, you know, it was glued like this originally, like that, but you can't really read that very well from the sound hole, so I think I'm gonna clean it up and put it in there like that, and then you can look through the sound hole and see it. And I don't think that's gonna affect anything, like the value or anything like that, because this thing is in pretty sad shape. But it'll be nice to be able to, to actually see the name in there. There is tons of glue in here. When they glued the badge in, they, they really weren't too particular about it. This should be legible through the sound hole now, so I'm going to <clears throat> glue it down and clamp it real well. And I'll clamp it just a little bit where it doesn't interfere with the, the top or, or the back, I should say, going back on it. Using my high dollar glue spreader again. It's the best glue spreader I have. It seems like I'm putting it in upside down, uh, but that's the way you need to read it through the sound hole. So that's why I'm doing that. I think I'll just take a large block and put lay over this and then clamp it down this way. And that should keep it flat and, and let it do its thing. That should work, and I can see the glue squeeze out very evenly all the way around. And I think I'll just wait until that glue tacks up and then I'll clean the glue off that way um, because it's hard to get in there with a rag and wipe that the way this is right now. Certainly no more glue than has been spilled all over the rest of the guitar, so I'm sure we'll be fine.
thought you'd like to see the weird undulations in this 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 brace you know that's curved up on the edge ends like that it's an unusual shape this block here came out of the kerf that's on the inside there and that'll go back in place too so everything's working really well um gonna be hard to get this one clamped up <laughs> I got to be honest because this is really curved and uh, it the curve doesn't seem to match the top real well I don't know if you can see that in there but it's like when I push this side down that sides up a half inch or more and vice versa if I push this side down this sides up a half inch or more I don't know if this is possible physically to, to put this back but I'm gonna make my best effort at it uh, Gee, I don't even know where to start hardly just gonna guess I'm just gonna start by gluing the middle and uh, you know or clamping the middle and then working my way to the edges and that may or may not work I truly don't know it's gonna be a first for this type of a brace I've never seen a brace quite like this I'm gonna have to really use a strong clamp in the middle give it a shot I'm clamping that sucker down really tight and it's teeter-tottering right now boy I think what I'm gonna do is just walk it both directions at the same time yeah I really not expecting good things to come of this but hopefully it'll work I really don't know Really tightening them much tighter than you would normally clamp one. I have to, I think. This one will reach far enough for what I need to do, so I guess I'll try it. Yep, it's working so far. The operative word is so far. It's a little bit out of, out of the spot, but it's not far out of the spot. Uh, wow. I'll try some more clamps and show you what that looks like as I get further. Well, it's working. I'm not going to lie. I heard the top crack on this one a little bit, but you know, you got to do what you got to do, you know. I'm going to try to find another brace that I can put a clamp on both ends here and I think we'll be good. Well, I got one big clamp on that end and it actually worked to my surprise. So I'm going to do the same thing on this end. I truly didn't think I'd get this as good as it is. I just didn't think it would bend that much. So far, it's come right back. And, of course, this one's got to be a little bit horsey here. It's got to run off the brace. But it's working. That's as good as that can be done, I believe. I don't think you could get that much better. Yeah, I'm clamping up these a little bit tighter again just to make sure but that you can see there that it's run the glue out in all places I again I think I'm just gonna wait and clean that glue up afterward so I'm gonna let this set overnight now and we'll move on to the next braces tomorrow well I glued the uh, two braces on early this morning so it's late afternoon now or mid afternoon and it's plenty dry to go ahead and do the next one so that's what I'm doing I'm gonna go ahead and try to get the next brace in here and it would be simple if it would just be simple it's trying to jump out on me here and this this clamp I thought wasn't going to be big enough and now it's actually too big. It's, it's hitting the back of the hole back here. It's just barely able to get in there. But, but it is getting in there and I do have it down tight. So now hopefully I can put these other clamps on the ends and get the ends clamped down. I think that made a real good solid clamp job without having to put in other clamps. Although I think I'm going to try anyway. And the reason is I'd like to move these clamps back toward the end more so 
if I can get another clamp in there, if I can, this little sound hole is so small, I'm not sure I can get another clamp in here. good there. I'm tickled with that so that'll set now and uh, do its thing. The glue squeezed out very evenly all the way across. Not so much right back here on this side but on this side it went all the way across. I don't know why there's a slight missing but I can still see glue there. I think it's fine. Let's see if we can just go ahead and get one more brace on this one too. And then we've only got one more set of braces. I'm going to clean this off. Here's how I've been cleaning these off. I just take a, a flat chisel and use it like a scraper. That gets rid of all the junk that's under the brace. I return for a visit. My father lay dying. I knew it was vain. It's kind of tricky getting these end clamps on unless you have it clamped in the middle because these, because they're clamped on an angle on this little angle piece, push the brace across. So, anyway, that works really well that way. And we'll go ahead and get these other clamps on here too. You can't get too many clamps on these things. Body turned and said, son, you should move away. I just couldn't leave him. Okay, so we'll let that set for a few hours, if not all night, and uh, then we've only got two braces to go. This one and one on the top, and we're done on the braces. Well, surprise, surprise, I got all the braces in this. I did that the rest of that off camera, but all the braces are in here now, so we're completely finished with braces. <clears throat> this piece here had uh, fallen out inside the guitar, but it came out of right here. And so I'm going to put that back. I can tell that's exactly where it went. Uh, I'm going to clean it off first and get rid of, uh, you know, any junk like this glue. There's old glue on here. Hopefully you can see the glue actually coming off. I'm trying to scrape the glue off without changing the shape of the wood much. The more glue you can get off, the better your new bond will be with your new glue. Uh oh, that broke it. Didn't want to break it. It's not going to be any consequence that I broke it, but I just didn't want that to happen. It's kind of par for the course with this being so bent. This is a bent curved piece, so it's hard to scrape this without applying pressure to it. All right, so that's pretty clean. I think that'll be sufficient. This edge here, I'd like to get rid of any glue that's on this edge too. Oh, well, that didn't help. <laughs> There's your problem right there. You know, you, everything is so brittle. There's so much glue. They just had glue globbed on everything. Uh, try to put this piece back in there where it goes. If I can remember which one of these it was now. It went right there. That's where it goes. So I'm going to put a drop of glue on that. Well, I thought that's how it went. Maybe it went this way. I, I think it went that way. Yep, that's the way it went for sure because I can see the stripe of glue across there so I know that's the way that went. It's like I say, it's simple but it's complicated. Before I go gluing this, I'll try to clean this up a little bit. Most of that, the actual um, 
glue is not there, so it's pretty it's pretty good. All right, so let's see here if we can get this back in place. There we go. That's it right there. You can see how it fits that pretty good. Whoops, broke that little part there again. Again, it's not a big deal. As long as I get glue on it, it's fine. This probably would have been a good candidate for CA glue because it would have been instant. But I'll figure out a way to get that clamped up and get it back together here. I'll show you what that looks like once I figure it out. I was having trouble getting that to clamp. I tried clamping it with clothespins and things, which is what I typically use, but that just wasn't working. So I got them all lined up, set in place. Then I just put the span across the top of all of them with this flat piece of wood and then just clamped it that way. And I think that's gonna be fine. That's the way I'm gonna leave it for now. Okay, the weekend has passed, it's Monday. And I'm about ready to put the back back on this old guitar, but the problem is these things extend into where the kerf is, and that doesn't give you much flexibility. And when it comes to assembling one of these things, I like flexibility because the sides never match the back when you try to put these things back together. The sides always expand in different directions and then you're trying to squeeze it all together. And a lot of times if this stuff's into the kerf, you can't squeeze it properly. You can't get it where you want it. So I'm just gonna get rid of those problems and it's not gonna affect anything. And I'm just gonna cut these braces back to the, uh, to the edge of where the kerf goes. And then they shouldn't be as much of an issue when I'm trying to put it back together. I just know this from experience that this is gonna be a problem. So I'm just gonna get rid of the problem. Plus I may wanna be able to tweak this back in order to get the neck angle where this thing could be playable if you wanted to. And with these things out there into the kerf, you can't tweak it very much. So this will help me with that. And we'll see. It may or may not work or may not may or may not help anyway. But we'll at least given ourselves the best chance. Now here's a different example here, a different issue. This here the uh, kerf is already on here. And that's going to make it difficult, quite honestly, to, uh, to make uh, any appreciable changes. In fact, if it wasn't for the problem of breaking it, I'd put this kerf on the on the inst on the uh, body rather than here. Maybe I'll try to do that anyway. I I actually glued it back in place like it is, but after rethinking it, I would really rather have it on the body. So I think I'm just going to see if I can get it on the body. I think it'll make me my job a lot easier. Oh, let's see if we can't uh, get that back in this body. And the problem with that is trying to get it to line up. <laughs> That's going to be tricky. Goes right there because I can see the little crease. So we can start with that and we know we're in the right place because this lines up with the little crease in the body here. So that's perfect. And it matches up here too. So we're good. I'm going to go ahead and just get some glue on it and start clamping it in place. I'll get some clothes pins for that. Okay, so I've got that pinned on and we'll put the next piece back. Now you can't really see what I'm doing very well, but I'm just trying to get the glue off this piece and it's on pretty thick. So just try to cut it down as much as possible. Now I'm an old dirt farmer. Scrape a living from the soul Like my father before me I labor and toil There's quite a bit of glue on this too. I should have cleaned these off a little better, but I don't know. Just stuff happens.
All right, we'll let that set up and uh, I'll work on the top or the, I'll work on the back some more trying to get the braces cleaned up. We'll have to give that at least at least an hour to set up good, probably longer actually. Again, to give myself the best chance, I'm going to have to get this whole edge really smooth and I'll work on all of that. So I'm going to get all this cleaned up, get the edges really smooth and all that, and then I'll show you the next step. Well, while that's still setting up, I'm going to clean these edges up a little bit. The other night I woke up from a dream. This dream to me so really seen. And in this dream I came upon a man. A man who left no footprints in the sand. That at least knocks off any big high, high spots and big glue globs and things. That gets it fairly cleaned up. And we've got the back cleaned up now all the way around. There's a little bit right there, but I don't think that's going to be much of an issue. It'll, it should match to this here and I'm okay with that little bit there. I don't think that's going to be a problem. If it feels like it's a problem, I'll take it off of there. But back here it's not much of an issue because I want all this to match up pretty good back in the back. I'm only going to glue it up to about right here and then the, leave the front edge loose and so then I can try to set the neck angle um, you know, later. But uh, so it'll be a kind of a two-part process or two-step process. And also before I put the back back on it, I guess I might as well go ahead and glue the top down pretty good too. There's places where the top is loose. It's not real bad, but what I want to try to do is get a wedge in between the top and the curve. Try to hold it open so I can get glue in here in places. I think you can see there I've got this wedged open and now that I've got it wedged open, I'm going to try to get some glue down in there. Dressed on the white, we walked a long way. For those in need, we'd often stop and pray. Our journey guided only by the night. And yet we walked as if there was a light. Then he said, walk the straight and narrow every day. Okay, I think that got the glue down in there pretty good. You can see it squeezing around. So I'll get some clamps and put on that now. Well, I've got the clamps on that edge and now I'm seeing there's quite a bit here that's loose. Figure I might as well go ahead and get that done too at the same time, cleaning out some of the junk I can see in the way. Problem is on this one, the curve stayed stuck to the top, so it's a little more difficult to wedge open. So I guess I'm just gonna have to hold it open with my fingers and squirt the glue down in there and if my glue bot wasn't giving me trouble if it was a little more open where the glue would come out that'd be a lot easier so I guess I better fix that okay I think crisis aborted here I think I've got the glue bot open again much better I'm gonna wiggle this one quite a bit to get the glue down in the crack a little better because like I said this this one's a little different. The uh, kerf actually stuck. I can see the glue coming out on the inside though, so that must mean I've got it in there pretty good. I'm just pumping it around back and forth like that quite a bit just to get the glue down in there as far as it'll go. And I better get a damp cloth to clean that up with. Well, we got that clamped up now. I think that's going to be just fine. And there's no significance to the fact that these are turned this way and these are turned that way in terms of the clamps. I was just, it's just the way I had the guitar turned. I'm right-handed. I like to tighten the wing nuts down with my right hand. I had the guitar turned around the other way when I tightened these. So that's all there is to that. Okay, I think that's going to fix that. Well, now that I look at it, there's some more looseness up here at this edge. So I'll probably fix that off camera. Uh, actually, I'm going to have to wait till this is set up because I can't put clamps across there yet. There might be some up here, but I don't, I don't really see that loose right now. We'll fix whatever needs to be fixed before we put the back on it. 
Well, the clamps had stayed on the sides there for a couple of hours, and uh, I think uh, it's plenty safe to remove those now, and so they're off, and I'm ready to put this back on. And what the encouraging thing is that when I line up this back and get this lower bout, you know, uh, you can see that the front doesn't meet. So that's good because that way I'll pull this neck back, make it meet, and uh, that should set the neck angle then. So I have a feeling we're going to get lucky on this and get the neck angle at least in the playable bar ballpark. It may not be the best, but. Uh, I think it's going to work, and that's all we can really ask for on this old guitar. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and bite the bullet and just get the glue on here, and I'm going to put the glue on just the lower bout, basically, and just try to get the lower bout to line up. And he said, head straight toward the light and never stray. Then he said, lend a helping hand along the way. Then he said, find the love of God on judgment day. Okay, so now the tricky part is trying to get this thing to stay in line. It really isn't as easy as you might think. It, uh... This is, this is one of the tougher jobs when you're putting an instrument back together, is getting this back and the sides to line back up. They often don't like to line back up. You would think that'd be fairly easy, but it's, it's really difficult. The trick for me is to start someplace that, where it looks good, and the end back here looks the best. Get these on here and get them really tight. If you can get these on and get them really tight, then you've got a little better chance of putting the rest of them on and getting them to hold. The problem with these spool clamps is when you tighten them down, they like to walk off the edge. That's the yeah, they, they seem like they'd be perfect, but they and they are pretty good, but they like to walk off the edge. And if you don't know what I mean by that, then you probably haven't ever done this before, but as you spin them, the, those things, they get tighter and they want to slide off. It's just the way it is. I think I'm going to go around this edge first, because this edge looks like it's going to cooperate the best. This one here is trying to be mean. It doesn't want to go in there. And it's kind of slid back out again. A lot harder than it looks. Like it just seems like this should just be simple, but it isn't. It's really, you got to strain to get this stuff to work. This end here is not wanting to cooperate, I could tell already. It's amazing how many of these clamps are not to size, and I had a whole bunch of them to size already. So I think I'm just going to turn it up this way and do these because I have to push down on the side in a bunch of places. Actually, that I pushed down and it, it went in and stuck right there. So I think that's good. I'm going to go ahead and get this clamped while I can. Then he said, walk the straight and narrow every day. Then he said, head straight toward the light and never stray. Then he said, lend a helping hand along the way. Then he said, find the love of God on judgment day. And now here's the hard one. The side is going in a little too much there, but those are really hard because there's not much you can do to get that back out. I don't think I can reach through there very well and do it, but I'll try. That's where you need your third hand. See, I need somebody to hold that right there. If you would just hold that for me while I spin this, 
But see, you won't do it because you're just not cooperating with me. I always say it would be so simple if it would just be simple. But very, very rarely will it ever just be simple. It always finds some way to make it complicated. That worked pretty well. It's aligned pretty well, but what's weird is that this top isn't straight. It's off more here than it is over here. Here it's almost perfect. Here it's got a big gap. And I don't know how to explain that because I've got it lined up all the way around back here. It's perfectly in line. So you explain that one for me. I don't know how to explain that one. That's not pretty. I don't like that at all. Yeah, well, it's 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 got a big gap under here and a big gap here, so that's part of it. So I'll have to find some way to push this out, pull this in. We're not going to do that till tomorrow once this sets up really good. We're going to make sure this is all sitting tight, and then we'll work on this end tomorrow. I think just for safety's sake, I'm going to go ahead and push this over a little bit. It might help me tomorrow when I'm trying to line this up. Might help a little bit. There's no glue on that one, but it may make it relax a little bit for tomorrow. Well, that's going to be it for today, so we'll see you tomorrow and see what it looks like. The next day, and all the clamps are off of this, so I'm working on setting it up a little bit. I've already taken some of the bottom of the feet on this uh, bridge. I'm going to see if I can make it match the top a little better. It doesn't match at all presently. I'm not sure it's ever going to match it very well. Again, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because it's a wall hanger, but I am going to try to make it playable if we can make it playable. We may just call that good enough, and we'll go ahead and get the rest of the hardware put back on this thing, and then we'll see what we can do about setting some strings on it. I think I'm going to take this over to the buffer and see what the buffer does to it uh, before I try to put the hardware back on it. Uh, you know, it would be nice if it would shine up a little bit. I don't know if it will or not, but we're going to give it a try and see. So for reference, here's what the back looks like right now. Let's see if the buffer will do anything. And the truth is, I have no idea. He said, walk the straight and narrow every day. Then he said, head straight toward the light and never stray. Then he said, lend a helping hand along the way. Then he said, find the love of God on judgment day. Well, I was kind of afraid of that. You see how it did make it shiny, but it made it real white and chalky looking. I'm going to take it back over to the desk and see if I can get rid of that chalky look before I go any further. Well, if we get the videos in the right order, you saw me over there trying to uh, do a little bit of uh, buffing on this. And, of course, it turned it chalky white. And I was afraid of that. I actually thought that might happen. So, well, let's see if we can do anything about that. I'm not really sure what to try. I think I'm just going to try some of this Be Good Oil and just put that on here and see if this will help or make it worse. Seems like that's making it worse, honestly. I didn't expect that. That actually feels like it's making it worse. That ain't good. Maybe I should just try it dry first and see if I can get the junk off dry. Yeah, it can see you can see the marks it's leaving on there. Here's a clean towel. See if I can get anything off this way. You can see the smudge, the dirt that's coming off of there. I washed this already with soap and water, so you know, I don't know what this is. It's just oxidation or something that's on here that I thought that oil would help that, but it didn't really seem to help much. I'll tell you what I'm going to try. I'm going to try some Zippo lighter fluid. Uh, I'll try it in a small spot first, but this often does a good job on old finishes or on just cleaning up junk that's on finishes, I should say. So I'll just try a little small spot. Just a tiny bit of it first. 
just try it right here and see if that's doing anything. Well, that knocked it off pretty fast. I mean, it took a lot more of it off. I'm just hoping it's not taking off the finish. I'll try a little more and see. It really does take off a lot of stuff. I'm just not sure it's improving anything. I don't know. This is just dry right now. I'm not using anything. Just It's taken off some stuff too. My vote's out on the whole thing right now. It's so oxidized. It really does take off a lot of oxidation. Just trying to get the chalky junk back off of it right now. It looks about equal from one side to the other for the most part. It's not much different now. So, I don't know. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to do much to this finish to make it any better. So I think I'll just go with my old tried and true, which is just linseed oil, boiled linseed oil. And we'll wipe it down with that. That won't hurt anything. I, I'm convinced of that. I just don't know that it'll help that much either. I'm just going to pour a little bit of boiled linseed oil right on top here, like that. And then I'll just start spreading it around. In my opinion, this is about the best thing you can do for an old finish like this that's just really bad. The finish itself is really bad. This doesn't seem to ever hurt anything and it typically brightens up the finish a little bit, makes it look a little bit better. And if you did it several times, it would even look better. That looks a whole lot better already. So I think that's just the process I'm going to go through. I'm going to do that one more time, put a little bit more on here, and just wipe it in a little bit more. I think that's as good as it's going to get. Doesn't look great, but it looks better than it did. That's all I can say. You compared to like the side, how dull the side is there. And you can see, and then we'll put linseed on oil on that and see what it does for the side. Just poured quite a bit on my rag. And we'll just go on this side here and see what it looks like after we're done. See, that looks pretty good. That looks better. Looks better than that side, right? Now, this here is not lined up, so I'm going to have to clean this up on this edge. And it didn't line up here, uh, and I couldn't get it to line up. I tried. It's a little bit out right there, too. It really was misformed. So I'm going to take my little finger plane and knock this off right here where it's sticking out. All right, well, we're just going to go ahead and keep cleaning up things like that, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like here in a minute. Okay, now that I've got it wiped down, I'm going to start working on cleaning up the hardware, and I've already wire brushed this. You can see the difference between this and the rest of it. The rest of I mean, this used to look just like that. And there's really nothing to salvage here. It's just cleaning it down to bare metal, making it kind of shiny. Then I'll probably just wax this, and that'll help keep it uh, looking decent for quite a while anyway. Um, I imagine this may have been some sort of a nickel plating at one time, but that's long since gone. Well, there's what she looks like all cleaned up. Um, it looks pretty nice. It's going to be a lot nicer looking than what was on there, that solid rust. I think what I'm going to do is just take and spray this with some lacquer, and maybe the lacquer will keep it from tarnishing for quite a while. Yeah, that's my best guess, so that's what I'll do. I've cleaned up the tuning keys. They were in pretty bad shape. You, you know, you can't get into all of it with the uh, wire wheel, but you can at least, you know, make it look sort of presentable compared to the way it was. I thought I had cleaned up these ends of these buttons, but I didn't. Apparently on this set, I apparently missed it. So I'll just take a wire wheel and try to clean it up a little bit. 
the tricky thing here is uh, getting these gears to mesh and getting this um, back in there. And I got it, so it worked okay. And now we've got to tighten this down with a screwdriver. And I get to do that five more times. And I think we're good. I'm going to try to clean up the buttons a little bit too. So I'll do all of that and show you what it looks like when I'm finished. Thought I'd just show you here. I just put a little bit of semi-chrome on this one and polished it. You can see how shiny it is compared to how dull these other ones are. So that'll give you some idea that that semi-chrome really works good for buffing out. And I just rubbed it like that. Didn't do very much, really. Uh, didn't take very long at all. So I just lay it on something like this when I buff it and uh, makes it easier. So I'll buff this middle one out and show you the process. So it just keeps it from spinning when you lay it on something like that. And really that's about all the amount, that's about as much buffing right there as you need to do. So let's wipe that off. You can see how much shinier it is already, if it'll focus. There you go. So the two here are real shiny, and this one hasn't been buffed yet. So it's a very simple process. Um, just show you a way that you can make your old tuners look really nice. For the record, I don't think these tuning keys had ever been off this guitar, and that's the truth. I don't think they've ever been off. There's no evidence of any other tuning keys, so I'm pretty positive these are the originals. They match up all the little spots perfectly. Uh, everything matches. So the holes are not wallowed out. In other words, I'm putting these in and they're going in real tight. Uh, like it's the first time they've ever been in there or whatever, you know, it's uh, it's amazing that it's that original Very few old guitars like this are original with the tuning keys and things. It's amazing. They're not wallowed out uh, You know almost always they are You almost always have to poke toothpicks in there and things like that to get them to tighten up But not these these are absolutely tight and the tuners cleaned up really good. So I'm pretty happy with the job there. So that's what she looks like after clean, cleaning up, which is about as good as it's going to get on something like that, unless you just spent hours and hours detailing it. And we did that pretty fast. I'm going to go with extra light strings. Uh, these are Diodario uh, EJ15. And extra light strings or what this little guitar should have had on it all along, or at least light strings, minimum of uh, you know standard light. But these extra light strings, I think will be perfect for this. I, it's way stronger now, probably than it ever was, because uh, the, the tight bond glue is far superior glue. And so it's very strong now. I'm not worried about it coming apart, even with uh, standard uh, strings. But, you know, over time, it, there's a lot of pressure on this top, and I think the uh, extra lights are perfect for this. I'm going to go ahead and get it strung up, and then I'll show you what it looks like and sounds like here in a minute. Well, my friends, I'm changing direction a little bit. Uh, it does look like this thing is going to be playable, so I am going to go ahead and do a light fret job on this. Um, I can see somebody has flattened these frets off in the past. This first fret, for whatever reason, is still pretty high though, and the rest of them are pretty flat. And so the first fret is buzzing on the G, on the E string, on the bass side. So I'm gonna do a little bit of filing on that and uh, maybe recrowning a little bit. The strings are in the way now, and that's a little bit of a problem, but, but not much of a problem. I'm used to doing this kind of work, so it doesn't really bother me. I think that's probably sufficient. And now I'll just get the round over tool and I'll round over all the fret. You know, by rights, I'm just being honest with you here. If we were really wanting to make this a real player, we would replace these frets because these frets are pretty bad. But to just be playable, and that's a different word from being a player, but just being playable, this will be fine. 
And if at some point he changes his mind and he wants to fix it up to play a little bit better, it won't be any problem. These frets have been filed way down by somebody. Uh, yeah, it's crazy how flat they are. I'm not trying to bring them back 100%. I'm just trying to get them back in the 75% range, I think. And I think I'm good with that on this guitar. I was talking to Gary about this guitar. He says he doesn't think it's been played for probably close to 50 years. And I, I don't doubt that. I don't think I've ever seen frets as tarnished as these are tarnished. These, are, these frets are just black. That makes them look a lot better. Makes them look like they've had some attention at least. Then I'll just clean off the filings here. Again, I, I, the reason I waited until I got the strings on here is I wanted to even see if it would be playable because I, I wasn't even sure. It, it's really hard to tell. And since it is gonna be playable, that's why I'm doing this light fret job on here. And that's good enough. That fret job there is good enough to make it playable. And the only other thing I'm probably gonna do now is just go ahead and wipe this down with some linseed oil. And then we'll tune it up. And hopefully we can play it. I, I still think the E string, the bass E string may be buzzing on this first fret. And if it is, I may have to build that spot up a little bit and make it work. I'm not gonna worry about making a new nut or anything like that. It's not worth it. You understand when I say it's not worth it, I mean from the customer's perspective, the customer doesn't want to do that. And you know, when you're in business to please customers, you gotta do what the customer says. It's not what you want or what I want, it's what the customer wants. And so I don't wanna spend a lot of time and money on this, uh, you know, to do something he doesn't really want. Now, if he changes his mind and wants it to play better later, we can do that. Right now, we're just making it playable. And even that is, you know, loosely defined. Okay. All right, I'll tune it up and show you what it sounds like. Well, my friends, the goal has been met. The guitar is back together. It is playable. I've still got a little bit of touch-up dye and things like that, a few little niceties. But overall, it's back together and it's playable. And uh, so I thought I'll just go ahead and play it for you right now. It actually makes a sound. Probably the first sounds it's made in over 50 years, according to Gary. Pretty cool. Fallen leaves that lie scattered on the ground. The birds and flowers. are not around they're all scattered like the leaves upon the ground some folks drift along through life and never thrill to the feeling that a good deed brings a tear it's too late and they are ready taking any gold you can't use it when it's time for hands to fold when you leave this earth for a better home someday the only thing you take is what you gave away fallen leaves that lie scattered on the ground The 
birds and flowers that were here cannot be found. All the friends he ever had are not around. They're all scattered like the leaves upon the ground. Yes, they're all scattered like the leaves upon the ground. That's an old Grandpa Jones number. At least he made it famous. A lot of people say he wrote that, but I had found out somewhere that he wasn't actually the writer of the song. He just made it popular. So I don't know if that's true or not either. So there you go. But the little guitar, the little Richter that wanted to be is now a guitar again. And uh, if it's a Richter harmony, well, that's great. I don't know. I didn't look up all the details. Someone did send me a story on it, but I haven't uh, had time to read that yet. All I know is it's back in one piece. Thanks so much for watching. If you got anything out of this, be sure to give me a thumbs up. That always helps the channel, and I would very much appreciate it. If you're not yet subscribed, be sure to do that too. Thank you very much. Yeah.